Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearances video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one though, just a random uh, a suggestion, one that I found actually on a website that chronicles disappearances throughout decades. So it starts with the most recent decade, then it goes backwards up until about 1800, and in some cases even earlier on there. So every now and then I'll just pick a random one like this one, look at the information and if it finds if I find that it's interesting enough to share then absolutely this is where this entry comes in it has to do with a young man who disappeared in his youth uh, very very young in some ways and to this day it's a mystery as to why he disappeared because mainly the idea is that he himself in other words disappeared voluntarily a lot of times with these disappearances it's pretty much just forced like something happens um, people get kidnapped or some other unfortunate circumstance but no in this case everything seems to point to this young man just having I guess a crisis of sorts and then just voluntarily disappearing thereafter it has to do with this you're looking at him now he went by the name of Ettore Majorana so let's go ahead and let's talk about all the information associated with his work and then ultimately what led to his disappearance. So who was this Ettore Majorana? Uh, I'm talking about him, by the way, in the past sense because he was born originally in 1906. So unless he's still alive, he's definitely past 100 years of age now. But yes, indeed, he was born specifically August 5, 1906, there in Catania, Sicily even from a very 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 young age I guess the age of a young boy it was discovered that he was mathematically gifted this was someone who definitely took a liking to the world of math to the world of physics um, in fact uh, probably uh, an inspiration of it came from his uncle a guy by the name of Quirino Majorana who was also a physicist and so by the age of night uh, I'm sorry by the year 1923 just about maybe 17 years later he was already in in his university studies uh, switching uh, essentially working there uh, I guess at the university uh, towards a degree but he decided to switch from engineering to physics and that way he just dealt forward with his his particular passions particularly he had one with a thing called atomic spectroscopy so if anyone knows exactly what that's about and and I'm including in this case a picture essentially of some of his notes you'll see how way out there this stuff is I love math myself too but um, some cases it's more like a hobby nothing like this where people just take this and they're almost like opening up the realm of the universe itself when it comes to these equations. Uh, by 1928 he was already working on several papers. His first paper in fact, uh, his academic paper was published around that time. It was co-authored with another gentleman named Giovanni Gentile. Um, he was just basically going along chugging with calculations, working on things, uh, working with other colleagues as well. By 1929, he earned his Laura in physics, which is something along the lines of, of I think they call it a so post-secondary academic degree. If someone can tell me what that is exactly, is that a... Uh, an undergrad like the equivalency or is that a graduate degree whatever is the case he obtained it there at the University of Rome La Sapienza and so he was still continuing at that point just going along with his work in fact he was recognized as someone uh, I guess with the person most responsible early on for knowing about the neutron the particle known as the neutron because apparently he discovered it as as being something like there was something that was an experiment that they were working on that they, it was like a mystery unknown particle within that experiment and so he determined that it had to be something that had both a neutral charge and then a mass about the same as a proton so in his case he uh, discovered it something along the lines of a neutron one of his colleagues told him write an article about it you discovered it but he didn't even bother thereafter this guy at Tory so when that happened someone else what well, followed along those same lines and they found the existence of this same neutron they published an article and guess what they were awarded the Nobel Prize so it goes to show that this guy how smart he was he was able to discover it but he didn't really care about um, the glory or any of the other 
prizes for discovering these things. To him, it was just about, I guess, more of a personal conquest than later on trying to do something else, because otherwise he would have definitely gotten the Nobel Prize himself, uh, and again, in 1932. And then there he was working with other famous people. In fact, in 1933, he was working with Werner Heisenberg. He found in him a colleague as well. He considered him a scientific colleague, but also a very close personal friend, and they uh, started to work together on the theory of the nucleus and other uh, similar type stuff. But it was during, fast forward to later on that year, the fall of 1933, where things took a different turn for this guy, for this Hattori. That's when I guess you could, if you wanted to look at the shatter point, if you wanted to look at the actual point where things go, went downhill for him and eventually led to his disappearance, you could say it was this. Because throughout all his travels in fall 1933, he finally returned to, ho uh, to home to uh, Rome. But people noticed that he had developed like very, very poor health. And it was surmised it was because of his uh, nervous exhaustion. Maybe he was just working way, way too much, working too many long hours sleeping too little and so because of it his health basically just went downward he was put on a very very strict diet not really sure if this was voluntarily or not but in either case it led him to be more reclusive and then more harsh with everyone around him friends family members especially his mother, it seemed like it was an annual tradition to accompany her on a summer vacation by a nearby sea but this was the very first time where in his uh, reclusiveness, he sent a letter to her telling her that he would not do so. And it seemed like it was not do so going forward, at least the stance of that letter. People saw that he was just such a recluse that he barely left his home during that time period. He became a hermit. And for around, I guess, the next four years or so, he just completely stopped. Like he shut himself off from all of his friends, from all his family members and his work. His, his academic papers uh, were also stopped as well. But after those four years, I guess things turned around just a little bit. So whatever happened in his life during that time period, who knows? But he was definitely away uh, from everyone else. But sometime in 1937, he eventually became a professor of theoretical physics there in the University of Naples. So much so was his, was his gift when it came to his genius that he didn't even have to take the customary exam to prove what was needed to teach there instead he was just basically given it outright and then he was able to publish one final paper in 1937 uh, something about the symmetrical theory of electron and positron so towards the end it seemed like things were going a little bit better but even then though like they say a leopard doesn't change its spots in this case whatever was haunting him truly stayed there in the background because finally cut to the next year March 25th 1938 to be exact that's when he was known to have taken a boat trip from Palermo to Naples apparently to try to visit one of his friends a guy by the name of Emilio Segri and so during his boat trip he would just basically go there from point A to point B but he disappeared nobody saw him nobody knew where he went nobody knew if he made it nobody saw his return let's say back to his original point A he just pretty much outright disappeared and what made things more mysterious was the fact that he sent a note to another friend of his a guy by the name of Antonio Carelli right before that day like he sent him I guess it was a, a telegram sending him this information this is his exact letter he said dear Carelli I made a decision that has become unavoidable there isn't a bit of selfishness in it but I realize what trouble my sudden disappearance will cause you and the students for this as well I beg your forgiveness but especially for retained the trust the sincere friendship and the sympathy you gave me over the past months I ask you to remember me to all those I learned to know and appreciate in your institute especially Sciuti I will keep a fond memory of them all at least until 11 p.m. tonight possibly later to you and then he ended it with his name doesn't that sound like a suicide note right there he's basically telling everybody you know i'm sorry for what i've done um and 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 i beg your forgiveness and 
everything I'll remember to uh, regarding our experiences up until a certain point tonight down to the hour and then it was sent off so uh, isn't that crazy it's like he knew that he was gonna disappear uh, because he wanted to disappear and so he sent this letter to make sure everyone knew what happened to him at least in the sense of his disappearance but not exactly how it happened thereafter but yes indeed this letter was sent off and then people started looking for him but no no one ever ever found Found him. It seems like uh, he just went off the face of the earth. Uh, he might have either, let's say, uh, fallen a victim to uh, that trip there uh, by boat, maybe being lost at sea, maybe drowning, something along those lines, or he just basically committed suicide himself, and then that way he was ending whatever was haunting him all those previous years. But uh, there have been theories, in fact, as to why he did this. There's the um, notion, of course, of him committing suicide. There's other ideas that he escaped to another location in this case Argentina maybe to try to create a new life there or also to Venezuela as well there's even the extreme notion that he went to a monastery like he just completely gave up his entire past life to attend this new life there at the monastery and then there are others that are stating that around this time, again, this is being uh, late 1930s, this was the rise of the World War II, that he did so to avoid being a participant in the creation of the atomic bomb or an atomic weapon. And that's another, uh, at least another uh, theory out there. And finally, there's the idea that he went ahead and just basically became a uh, beggar. Like he wanted to become the life of something along the lines of, of let's say, a homeless person just again completely just letting go everything that was in his past life to do this here now if you wanted to see where things took an interesting turn you have to go by this check out this photograph here apparently this photograph is dated 1955 and within it the guy that you see on the left people are stating that that's him that that's a Tori Majorono, uh, in this case, still alive. Uh, this almost two, uh, you know, two decades later from his disappearance, because there are ten points of articulation within that photo that match his face, and it comes from a guy who stated he met him apparently in Buenos Aires, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, yeah, somebody met him there. They took a picture. I guess they must have recognized him, or it might have been just pure happen chance, and this was just a random. Stranger. Stranger, then they decided to take a picture together, and then that's when they saw the similarities thereafter. But yes, uh, there's the idea that he actually survived, in this case, his disappearance, if it was a suicide. No, like he didn't commit suicide, he just simply vanished uh, to lead a different life, and that this was the only known other existence of him afterward. So there's that notion, too. Whatever is the case, though. The attorney's office there in Rome has legally declared him, I guess, something on the lines of alive, at least between 1955 and 1959, living there somewhere in Venezuela. And then afterward, who knows? Uh, they considered the case officially closed because uh, someone voluntarily disappearing and not having anything criminal tied to them, it's not something that they'll pursue. So there's no real official matter here with regards to trying to find a final answer so uh, that's where they left it as is but if, if he was still out there no doubt he probably left the life just as is and then ended up dying somewhere afterward probably anonymous wherever he was no doubt um, he's probably dead by now because again being born in 1906 unless he has some other secrets he would be very very much probably the oldest person alive now if he was alive so wherever he was he eventually just died out afterward if that was truly him within that photo. But that's pretty much it. That's all the information associated with this gentleman, this Ettore Majorana, a gifted person uh, who does, at a very young age was was very, very um, prominent in the world of physics. And then for whatever reason, something just clicked in him that led him to become a recluse. And then those haunting days just stayed with him and then eventually led to his disappearance. If anyone has any more info, anything else that's interesting to share, please post those comments below. His works, by the way, are still being used to this day. Apparently, he had a, a, a his own theory, something like a, a math equation that's named after him that's being used to this day, the Majorana equation. 
There's also the idea that the work that he's done may also help build a quantum computer sometime in the future. So even decades afterward, his uh, his his paper, his his theories, whatever he was doing during his time period is still out, uh, relevant, relevant to this very day. So very, very interesting to find that out, too. So all right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care. Bye.